Hello, my name is Nell, and I have things to say. Just something cute before I start. Um, a couple of months ago I was doing a talk at a local little event thing and I was really nervous. And my mum said to me, you can do this. Because your name is Nell, and you have things to say. <laughs> and I was like, did you just quote my YouTube channel back at me? Did you just quote my intro? you using my words to uplift me? How dare you? Also, you're very right, my name is Nell and I do have things to say. Sometimes when I say hello to people and I say, hi, my name's Nell, I nearly, I nearly say it. I nearly say my YouTube intro. Which is embarrassing if that happened. Most people say, hi, welcome back to my channel, and I don't think they're ever going to be in a social situation where they are tempted to say that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's fun. So today, let's talk about age how weird age is. Age is an odd thing. It's very relative. You can be one particular age, and depending on the circumstances, that age can feel both very young and very old. For example, I'm 31. 31 feels pretty young to be getting hearing aids. However, 31 is rather old to be finding out for the first time that you've had a congenital hearing impairment since birth. I think most people would discover that a little earlier in life. But that's the pickle I'm in. The pickle wrapped in an enigma. Trapped in a conundrum. <laughs> Uh, a couple of years ago, I was noticing my hearing not being great, and I had it tested, showed hearing loss, and I was told that I would have to look into hearing aids, and um, it, I was going through a lot at the time, so I put it off for a bit. Then this year had more tests, and they said, hey, yeah, you definitely need hearing aids. Also, your pattern of hearing loss is weird. We think it's a congenital hearing impairment that you've had since birth. So there's that. So I had a bunch of tests to rule in or out any other possible conditions or um, things that could have caused this particular hearing loss, this pattern, and nothing nothing came up, except that it, it is a pattern that is widely seen in congenital hearing loss. It's called um, the cookie bite hearing hearing loss pattern, where basically like there's your there's your hearing, and um, it's just a big chunk, <laughs> big chunk taken out. Um, so yeah, it was, it was very confronting to learn that this has been a part of my life since birth. And I think part of why it was confronting is that I'm, I'm used to my body breaking down. Uh, it, 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 as I get older, it keeps breaking down in very new and exciting ways. Um, partly because of the amount of conditions that I have that are degenerative and, and that cause more and more damage. The, the older I get. And so when I was really noticing issues with my hearing, I, I started putting it down naturally, started putting it down to one of my other conditions. You know, it must be something to do with my muscles and my organs breaking down. And in, in a way, I've learned to come to terms with that. I get pissed off um, that my body is breaking apart, but I, I kind of know how to deal with it. I'm, I'm used to that. That's it's part of my process now. So finding out that this has been something that's been around for a really long time is really confronting. Partly because I'm seeing little flashes through throughout my memory of signs, of clues, that this has been there. So the part of my hearing that has been bitten out of the cookie, it's so cute, cookie bite, come on. Come on, doctors, why would you call it so cute? Oh boy. Cute name, terrible condition. Uh, the the bite that's been taken is out of my lower frequencies, um, which is speech, a lot of speech, um, bass notes, things like that. So growing up, I can remember times when I would get in trouble for not having listened or for not um, not following a command or, or an instruction like, Natalie, I told you to clean up your plates. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Don't answer back. <laughs> In my mind, no, you hadn't said anything. It, because if you had, I would have cleaned the plates up. I'm not, I'm not going to be naughty. I hadn't heard it. And so I didn't obey it. And so it was assumed that I was being naughty. Or I was seen as being absent-minded or 
off with the fairies or unfocused or easily distracted. In class, I, I remember getting in trouble because I wouldn't be listening to the teacher. But the thing is with me is that if unless I know that somebody's speaking to me and I can sort of zero in on their voice, a lot of speaking frequencies just kind of turn to fuzz. Um, I have to very I have to work hard to concentrate on them, and I only really know that once somebody gets my attention, and then I can focus on them. So in a classroom environment where there are a lot of other voices going along, I will not hear my, my I will not hear somebody saying "You up the back? Have you done this or that?" I just wouldn't hear it. I just think of my little self in this world where I couldn't hear things and everybody was telling me no, you can hear just fine, you're just not paying attention. My poor little self. And when I was opening up to friends about being diagnosed with this, somebody commented about how you know, it's, it's amazing how I'm so good at music. And I think it is that, that um, aspect of, you know, humanity overcompensating for the things we're missing out on so my memory is quite good so I remember songs really well and I think it's part of I think part of it is that I know that once I'm in certain environments I can't hear it hear a song as well so I work on remembering it so that once I'm away from the environment controlled environment where I can hear everything I can trust myself that I know what I'm doing in a song but yeah it's just it's been a lot <laughs> it's been a lot coming to terms with that and on Friday, I was hitted, fitted with hearing aids. Um, hitted with fearing aids. I've got hearing aids. There they are. There they are. Little sneaky buggers. Little sneaky buggers. And uh, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. I, I was outside and I could hear birds. I've always been able to hear birds. But now I could hear in individual birds. Like not just one mass of bird noise. But like a bird there. And another bird there. I could hear a car and I could tell which direction it came from because it's it's not just fuzz. I was at the pub today and I was talking to my worker and I could tell what song was playing on the radio and I could hear other like tables. I could hear things. I, I could hear things. I'm wearing hearing aids and I could hear things. What the hell? What the hell? But then it's been really weird because I was in the shopping center and I can hear things. There are a lot of noises. I can barely process the noises that I hear. And now I hear a lot more noises. And I assumed that everyone was talking to me. Because usually I could barely hear the person next to me when I'm in a like busy busy building like that. But now I can hear like the people three meters away. And I'm like, are they? There's a conversation happening. Am I involved in that conversation? Because usually this many conversations don't happen. Yes, Natalie, they do happen. You just couldn't hear them. Um, and I'm listening to music that has really deep, heavy bass notes because I can hear it better now. It's, it's, it's one of those weird things where like, okay, now I know what the issue is and I can fix it, but there's still the weird trauma of realizing that you are missing out on it on a huge chunk of things your entire life. How do you, how do you figure that out? It's like when I was diagnosed with autism last year and, and it's like you can then look back on your life and see all these gaps and you wonder how did I not know and you can think well okay now I know now I know and I can get on track with it but it's like it's like opening up your backpack and realizing there was a big 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 pile of rocks in there that you didn't know you were carrying and now you're realizing that You've been carrying a heaviness your whole life and you didn't realize it. Now you can take those rocks out and move on a little lighter, but there's still that feeling of going, all of those times when I got so exhausted, it's because I was carrying a pile of rocks. Realizing you were carrying baggage that you didn't even know about. So that's been a lot. And I know it's going to be slow and steady. A lot of people give up on their hearing aids. Uh, I don't want to. I. I I, I want to, I want to hear, I want to hear, <laughs> I want to hear the world, I want to hear what I've been missing, um, but it's a lot, it's very different, it's a very different world, and it's, it's weird just realizing all the things that were hiding around corners that you could never tell were there before. It's weird. Alright, that's all for this one, that's just me venting. 
Um, I'm thankful for my hearing aids, but it's a steep learning curve. But birds sound beautiful. They're amazing. All right. Bless.